every eye shall see him is uh, this is our this is the earth that we've that you know came about uh, God set this up he gave uh, Japheth up here he gave him basically Europe uh, all the way out with Russia and all that area and Shem he gave the Far East too and uh, Ham he gave uh, basically Africa the dark continent uh, I didn't uh, I, I, last night I, I noticed something about that, and, and it's odd. In J Daniel chapter 7, you have uh, one beast that comes out, and, uh, 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 and two beasts, but uh, in the book of Esther, you have three guys that are the horns in Esther. You have Big Thuthresh, and you have one more guy that comes out. Uh, if I was to look at this, I would say right now, Europe, other Japheth, is basically the guy that we would have to look at would be a guy by the name of uh, Putin. He's the most popular figure right now up in that area, wouldn't you say? And then for this area with Shem in Asia, you'd have to say that the most popular uh, figure right now for them is who? Uh, Xi Jinping. And then the last guy was is coming out of here and I thought this was odd in the book of Esther it's a guy by the name of Hamath and look down here this is a guy we don't know out of out of this we don't know this guy yet maybe it's uh, maybe it's the guy in Nigeria I don't know but somebody's going to show up and then after him guess who comes in as the Antichrist is going to come in and he'll rage war, and he'll get rid of those islands. Why? Do you understand what's going on? Uh, it's not about America anymore. Amen? Amen? Who's it always been about? It's a Jewish book. It's about Abraham's people. And he's here. God, God's, God's doing what? He's chasing the Jew back to Jerusalem. Amen? He's chasing that Jew back to Israel. Why? That's where he's supposed to be. Didn't he tell Abraham to stay there? Abraham went everywhere else. He told Isaac, what, stay in the land. Where'd he go? He went everywhere else. And what happened when they went everywhere else? They got in trouble, didn't they? Amen. He's supposed to stay put. God will put this right, and he'll put this back, and he'll chase that Jew all the way back here as much as, you know, as, as he said. And, uh, and everybody will be right there to be able to see him. What's going to happen over there? I'm sorry. He doesn't need it anymore. It's a fourth part. First part. Second part, third part, fourth part, we don't need it. Amen? It's just the way it is, people. Uh, you know, we don't get to pick the truth. We just get to preach the truth. Amen? All right. So that's what we would be uh, looking at. Uh, you know, I, I can't see how people don't want to learn the Bible right now. Uh, this place should be full. There's no other preacher going to preach this stuff, and the reason why is they don't know anything. That's what we're coming down to. They don't know anything. Now, these are the guys people want to, to, to teach them the truth, and they, there's no truth in what they have. All right, so we got up to verse number 8, and we'll start at verse number 8. We'll get through the whole chapter today. Uh, uh, hopefully we'll get done by 3 o'clock, and, uh, and we'll be done for the rest of the day, I guess. Okay, let's go. Um, and the Bible says, I am Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end, saith the Lord which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet, Say, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And what thou seest, write in a book, and send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto uh, Perg Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. And I turned to see the voice. With, that spake with me. And being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment 
down to the foot and gird about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, and out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was as the sun shineth in his strength. Let's pray. Father, thank you. We ask you, Lord, bless this reading, Lord Father. Bless thy word, Lord God, to get to our hearts. We love you, Lord, and we want to hear from you and talk to our hearts that it may change our prayers. It may make us look better towards other people. It may change our hearts totally. And we thank you, Lord, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. So uh, he comes and he says, uh, I, he, he, I am Alpha. I am Alpha uh, and Omega. Uh, we see this all over. We, we, we hear it, but what does it mean? It's kind of like in English. It would be like this. I'm A to Z. Catch that? Well, there's an alphabet there, basically. and it's, uh, he's, Alphabets are letters that make words, and he's the word of God. Amen. Amen? I'm the beginning, he'll tell you later. But he says, I am Alpha and Omega. I'm in everything on any word you can make. I, am, I, I made it. Uh, he says the beginning and the ending. He was there and he'll be there. Uh, when this is, if this was all to go away and, and there was no uh, heaven and earth, you realize he's still God? He's still God. That's the best part about it. He's still God. No matter what. What's that mean? You're just an additive. There's a lot of people think we're more important. People are more important than God sometimes. And you, you realize, uh, like, there's a group out there that thinks God waited around the whole universe until they came. And with whether you're here or not, he's still God. You should just be happy he made you so that you could get saved. Amen. Uh, he says, I'm the beginning, the ending, saith the Lord, uh, which is, I'm presently here, which was, I was always there, and which is to come, the Almighty. Do you ever think about who he actually is? Just one day, sit down and meditate in your house or whatever, and just, uh, just catch on this. He knows everything. It's easy to say, but then start to think about it. He knows everything. Uh, just so you know, he made everything. Uh, he's, the God, he's God and he has everything. It, it's just, it, you're, you're, how does your mind comprehend that? It doesn't. It can only go so far. The reason why is God never told you to understand it. He told you to believe it. Amen? Amen. He's the beginning. He's the end. Uh, verse number nine is the starts the testimony. I, John, who also am your brother, he wants to let you understand. I'm not some highfalutin guy. I'm just like you guys are. In fact, he was exiled. Uh, there's a part where Paul has to turn around and he goes, goes in the prison. Uh, if, just so you know, if a, the guys were to come in here and take me away and take me to prison, what would be uh, the same? What did that guy do? Around town, they'd be using me as a, acting like I'm a criminal. Off accusations, you're a criminal, especially for Christian today. But what would they say inside? Yeah, he's a criminal just like everybody else. Let's go to the next place. Amen. So uh, he says, I, John, I'm your brother, a compa companion. I'm, I'm suffering too, a companion in tribulation. I've been chased around. And in, in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. Now, John's writing right here in, the, in 90, like 94 AD, about two, uh, he's going to get let loose. This is, a, he's under the, uh, a guy by the name of Domitian. He's on the Isle of Patmos. He has been banned there. Uh, he's been exiled. Uh, it tells you in the next part, it says, I was in the Isle uh, called Patmos. But notice what he's saying there. He says, the patience of Jesus Christ. Uh, Sixty years ago, Jesus Christ died on the cross. He was buried. He was resurrected on the third day. That event happened a long, uh, 60 years ago. And you know what he's saying? We are patience. Uh, John, you really uh, need to look where we're reading from now. 
because now it's 2,000 years afterwards. Boy, that's a lot of patience, isn't it? People don't realize uh, how patience, uh, this is patience. Uh, I can tell right now I've been watching people in the church. I've been watching the church. I, I, I tell you what, people are getting anxious. They can see the, they can see the date. They can see the years. And you know what's happening? Everybody's getting anxious. Uh, I can guarantee you there's people in here that are uh, actually saying, even so, come Lord Jesus. I just want to get out of here and go get to the Lord. They're thinking that. It's getting anxious why we're seeing the times. We're seeing the calendar. We're seeing things develop right in front of us. In the last few weeks, how many have gotten more to the point of I'm seeing what I see now? It's starting to open up. Never. And then tomorrow, it just progresses and everything. And then hopefully people don't uh, forget like they've always done and say, where's the promise of his coming? So John is, uh, is banished. It's, uh, he was banished by a man by the name of Domitian in, uh, I think it was 94 AD and something in that area. He was the pastor, taken out as the pastor uh, of uh, Ephesus. It says, why? For the word of God in that verse. And what? For the testimony of Jesus Christ. He had a good testimony. He had a testimony of Jesus. You know, the testimony, uh, what's your testimony is, is secondary to what? Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, here we preach the gospel. What's the gospel? First Corinthians what? 14. 15. 15. Amen? 1 Corinthians 15. If anybody asks you where's the gospel or what is the gospel, you always know what it is. Just go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, right? Amen. I used to have it in all the kids who used to come to our house. I used to just sit there, 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15. Why? When they were, I had 10-year-olds that were turning around and people would, I'd have them saying to people, you know the gospel? They, they wouldn't know it. I'm talking about guys who were preachers. I 10-year-olds. You know the gospel? And they'd look at them and, and, and the kids would turn around and say, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, Christ died for our sins. He was buried. He rose again the third day. What's so hard about that? Amen? Go ask other guys that. You'll find out what they're learning in church. Amen. Amen. So he's there for the testimony, the word of God and the testimony. Uh, just so you know, after he got this vision, he was actually released in uh, 96 AD. He was released and went back to Ephesus. I don't actually uh, have anything from the Bible. We just got a, uh, there's a small history book that says, that says these things. I don't really know. And I tell you the truth, don't care. God got me this letter, I'll deal with that. Yeah. Amen? All right. So, he says in verse number 10. Now, here's where everybody gets lost right here. Commentaries. He says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Now, watch. And heard behind me. So, he has to be in an actual place. Amen? And he heard me. He says, he says, uh, I heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Did he hear a trumpet? No. He heard a great voice that was like a trumpet. Okay? And he's on the Spirit in the Lord's Day. You'll notice it has a capital S. Uh, what is he talking about is, is, is the question. Go to Ephesians chapter 5. And in uh, Ephesians chapter uh, 5, he says in verse number um, 15, See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. That's what I'll tell you right now. Redeem the time because these days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. What's the will of the Lord in your life? And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be, look what he says, be what? Filled with the Spirit. And when you're filled with the Spirit, what will happen? You'll be speaking to yourself in psalms and hymns and in spiritual psalms, singing and making melody in your heart to who? To the Lord. Uh, just so you know, uh, 
all those songs that are on the radio, they're not to the Lord, okay? Don't think I'm happy I'll sing this goofy uh, uh, Jethro Tull song or something stupid like that. Amen? Uh, he, says, he says, giving thanks always. There's something to do. For all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord uh, Jesus Christ. He said what? Be filled with the Spirit. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. Now, I'm going to tell you, guys are sitting there telling you that is the day of the Lord. That is not the day of the Lord. How do you know? He's still on Patmos. He's still on Patmos. He hasn't moved yet. He was on the Spirit on the Lord's day. So what is he uh, talking about? Uh, go to Romans chapter 14. But just so you know, as of... Two year, uh, it was two years ago, I actually thought this was the day of the Lord too because I learned from a commentary. And then I started putting the commentaries down and reading it for myself and common sense came in. Look down at verse number 5. And in verse number 14, Chapter 14, verse number 5 of Romans, it says, One esteemeth one day above another. Uh, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded. How? In his own mind. Okay? Uh, what, he, what he just turned around is one person esteemeth this day, one, one has that day. Uh, anybody here ever realized that the, the greatest holiday in this country is not Christmas? We made it that way. The greatest holiday is not Easter. We made it that way. Our greatest holiday in this country has been washed over, and it's called Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving was, was two, was only, and they've got to understand some Christmas, you got two competing uh, ideologies right there, right? You got Christ, and, and you got the other stuff. When you go to Easter, you got the Lord competing with who? The Easter bunny stuff. But Thanksgiving, there's never that. Thanksgiving was made for one reason, and that was so that our, as people, we would thank God. Giving thanks for what we have to God. And it was supposed to be over the whole country. Everybody, whether you're uh, uh, any, any, anything, you can give thanks to God. That's what they were looking at. And what happened was, in time and you know, we put the football games on. Now we got the two games, Detroit and Dallas, always play on uh, Thanksgiving. Now uh, we also see how bad it is. I know what teams play. You've you got to understand something. What we did to that holiday is we made it commercialized. Now it's all about stuffing your face so much that you have to release your pants so that you can sit there and burp all night. That's what it's become. You know, one prayer, you know, one prayer. You think that's enough thanks? Everybody for one prayer? Maybe we should go around the table and everybody thank God. At least for something. It's supposed to be a day of Thanksgiving, not a meal of Thanksgiving. Amen? And if we did, it would be what day? That would be a Lord's Day. Go to, uh, I'll show you another one. Go to... Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 16. In 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 16, he says, Now concerning the collection for uh, the saints, as I have given order to the churches of Galatia, even so do uh, ye. Upon the first day of the week, let every one of you lay by him in store as God hath prospered him, that there be no gatherings uh, when I come. And what he's saying is we're going to gather uh, on that day. And you know what the Bible says where uh, two or more are gathered together, how? In my name. He says, where's he? I'm there. I'm in the midst of that. You can take a day and you can give it to the Lord. You know what? John's in the spirit on the Lord's day. What's that? He's probably praying. He's esteemed this day. Uh, I know people say there's 300 references to the Lord's day. I'll give you more. There's actually three days that we could go in there too. But they didn't read that part. You can take a day 
and give it to the Lord and make it the Lord's day. And John's sitting there saying, I was in the Spirit when right there on the Isle of Patmos on that day, I'm in the Spirit right there. Uh, he's, he could be praying, probably praying about Ephesus, who's the Lord. I, I, I pray they have a, a, a pastor. I, I pray, Lord, about the, the messages they're going to hear. I pray for the heart of that preacher. I, I pray, Lord, Father, for those things. And John was in the Spirit on that day, giving thanks to God, giving all to his Lord and what happens all of a sudden he heard behind him a great voice as a trumpet saying I am Alpha and Omega the first and the last and what thou seest write in a book and do what and send it not just write it send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia. You, you want to write a book, and guess what? I want you to send it where? Where God's people are. Where's that over at the churches? Well, they're not, just so you know, they're not sitting at home on a Sunday morning, are they? Uh, how many of you feel bad when you don't go to church on a Sunday? That's true, you do. Why? Well, you think of it as what? Well, I'm missing my Lord's Day. This is a day I'm going to hear from them. There used to be a great feeling of that. Just so you know, there's a out of the whole out of this whole country now, seven percent, seven percent are going to a church this morning. That's it. Out of hundred percent, seven percent are going to a church. Out of that seven percent, only only so many are saved. The vast majority is not today. Out of the thirty percent, actually, I think it was out of the thirty percent of all the people claiming that they're a Christian, maybe about eight percent are saved. Why do you think when they caught those fish in John chapter uh, 20, they only caught 153? Why don't you do the math? 153 out of 2,000 out there in the lost and how many you're actually picking up. It comes out all the time to about 7 or 8% of people. That's what you're dealing with. That people call them themselves Christian and only 7% of them are saved today. We sure do need a, a Lord's Day. And he, he says, uh, he, he's talking here and he gives it to who the churches write a book right here write it in a book and and send it out where to the churches they need to know these things what churches the churches that we had in Ephesus and if you take all those churches and you to put them down on a map you'd find out they kind of make a circle just odd and then he turned look at verse number uh, 12 it says and and I turned to see uh, the voices that speak with me and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. I saw seven uh, golden candlesticks. Now, here's John. He's on the Isle of Patmos. He gave the day to the Lord. He's, uh, he's in the spirit on the Lord's day. And you know what? It's his darkest hour. He's been exiled. Nobody. He's alone. He's got nobody with him. And in his darkest hour, here comes, here comes the Lord. Anybody notice anything? Well, let's, uh, let's look at a few guys. Let's look at uh, a guy by the name of Abraham. Uh, when he was in his darkest hour, what happened? God came to him. You remember a guy by the name of Jacob when he was running away? Fell asleep on the ground. God came to him. You know, in his darkest hour. How about uh, Moses in chapter uh, 3 of Exodus? He's on the backside of that mountain, remember? And what happens? Here comes God after 40 years in the desert. Here he comes. Why? Well, there's, it's, it's his darkest hour, and now he meets, he's, he's looking. Hey, let me ask you something. How about you? When did God come to you? When you're on the mountain or in the darkest area? Time of your life. He comes when it's in the darkest times. Why? Well, the same with Stephen. Stephen's getting ready to die. They're going to chuck stones at him. And, and what happens? All of a sudden, he sees the, the glory of God. It opens up. Heaven opens up. He sees everything. And everybody turns around and what worries about him applauding Stephen or anything. No, Stephen's about to die. God wants to give him confidence. Why? He's going to be dying in front of all these men that are Jews. And, he, you know, you think, oh, they're mad at him. No, God wants to save them. He did get one of them in the next chapter. Amen. See how you're thinking that stuff now? You're already starting in your head. What's that tell you? You've been reading your book. Amen. Amen. So, he came to all these people, Ezekiel, he brought the whole throne to him, uh, came to Daniel while he was in Babylon. 
in his dark area. And, and, he, and here he comes and says, and I, I turned and, uh, to see what? The voice that spake with me. And I saw something. What? I saw seven golden candlesticks. I go to Matthew chapter 5. got a candlestick out there. You know what it says in, in Proverbs chapter 20, verse 27? It says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. God's looking to light that candle. Matthew chapter 5. Look at verse number, uh, we'll start in 13. He says, ye are the salt of the earth. That's you. But if the salt have lost, look at it says, his savor. If you're preaching out there and you lost your savior, believe me, you're going to be, there's no salt in it. He says, wherewith shall it be salted? It is thenceforth good for nothing but to cast out and to be trodden under foot of men. Verse 14, ye are the light of the world. Talking about you. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Okay, uh, there's some things in the Bible that says uh, uh, Solomon said, you know, that the Lord, he dwells in the darkness, the thick of the darkness. How can he when it says, you're, he's light. I am the light of the world. Well, he's not. When he goes in, it's dark, and then he's there, and it's light, right? If he's not there, there's the absence of light. It's dark. Well, that's what he's trying to say. Look, Larry has a Bible in his hand, but that Bible's no good unless he has some light. <coughs> Amen. It's a candlestick, but he needs the light. You understand? The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. What's that mean? That he's a candle, but unless he gets lit, he's no good. Amen. And he says there, he says, I sent it, send it to where I, he says, I saw, excuse me, I saw, I got the voice, and he was faithful and everything else, and when you're faithful, the Lord might visit you. And, uh, but here he goes, he says, I turned and uh, to see that, the voice that spake with me, and there I go, I saw uh, seven golden candlesticks. Now, what we have here is the first vision that John has. John has this vision right here, and it's going to include chapters 2 and chapters 3. He'll see uh, things of the church. And then he's going to have three more visions. I'll show you where they are. Uh, go to chapter 4. Just turn over to chapter 4. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was open in heaven, and the first voice which I heard was, as it were, uh, of a trump talking with me, which said unto me, Come up hither, and I will show the things which must be hereafter. There's the next vision. He'll get a heavenly vision uh, of things. And now go to uh, chapter 17. Chapter 17, and there came one of the seven angels, which had uh, the seven vials, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth on many uh, waters. He gets another vision of, of, a, of a religious system. Uh, go to, uh, uh, turn further to 21. Look down at verse, starting in verse number 9. And there came unto uh, me one, one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride and the lamb's wife. And he shows them, uh, he shows them New Jerusalem and what's to come. He's got three visions. He's going to, uh, I mean, three visions after this vision, and he's going to show John these things. You see, John, you stay faithful. Uh, you stay in the, the Lord's word, and he'll visit you. Amen? And uh, this, uh, he says to the seven golden candlesticks, uh, verse number 13, and in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. 
And he says, in the middle of those candlesticks, there was one like the Son of Man. Now, uh, you know what the candlestick looks like, right? you got this piece down here. And then uh, you'll have uh, uh, three branches coming out and going to each side. What candle is that? That's, the, that's Christ. That's that branch, the real branch. Everything goes into that, into Christ. Amen? He's that golden candlestick. But remember, there's a candlestick, but without light, it doesn't bring anything, does it? That means something. You see, you have them golden, uh, the seven golden uh, candlesticks. And then it says, uh, we're going to find out who the seven stand candlesticks are, but let's go on anyway. And he says, uh, he was clothed with a garment down to the foot. He's covered. And girt about the paps up here, he has a golden girdle that comes up. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. Well, there's some people that have always lived in the south. They don't understand what snow is. Yeah, down in 16, he says the sun. He wants you to understand it's really bright and it's really white. He says, uh, it says, verse number uh, 14, as white as snow, his eyes, his eyes were as flame of fire, as flame of fire, okay? Uh, take it this way, a flame of fire. He's got judgment in his eyes for one. He can look out, he's got a fire. He's gonna go through everything. He knows what's right and what's wrong. And you know what? That's what's wrong gets burned up, right? Remember he said this to you? He said, there's a chafe out there. There's a, a wheat of corn and, and there's a chafe. And, and when you have a, he talks about this. He says the chafe, well, that's the stem of the corn. And then on the top of a corn, it kind of uh, has a piece that looks like this, and it has little things. You know what that is? That's the corn. That's the corn, the ear corn on, of the wheat. And what happens is when they go out and they, uh, they, they take this, they take it in and they thresh it in the air, and they have to break this piece off. This is what is good. This is you. Amen? You're the wheat of that, you're the corn of the wheat. You know who that is? It gets burned up. That's the lost. They're the chafe. What are they? They're the waste product. They're the product we God don't need. Amen? It doesn't do anything for them. He's got the wheat and he's got the chaff. He's getting rid of it. Amen. And they are the eyes of the flame of fire. He's a discerner of these things. Uh, look at Daniel chapter uh, 7. Daniel chapter 7. And in Daniel, Daniel chapter 7, he brings up, these, uh, brings up these animals that are out there, diverse one from another. And, uh, and then the little horn, look at verse number 9, and he says, And I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow. Daniel saw this too. And the hair of his head like pure wool. It's white. His throne was like a fiery flame. And his wheels as burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Watch this. And thousands of thousands ministered unto him. And 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were open. And uh, he, he sees the same thing, and you know when he sees it, there's judgment coming. You see, there's thousands around him, thousands of thousands. Well, who are they? They minister to him. They serve him. You know, there's people that want to serve God here, and they're the ones that are uh, around him. Uh, and then he has thousands, th th ten thousands, and ten thousands that are going to be uh, before him. That's not the lost people. That's the others. We're the ones that are around him. The others, they're out there. They'll stand before him. How? One at a time. Come on up. You get your little private session. You understand? And 
what you do here is going to determine where you stand. Anybody ever been in a, you ever been in a, 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 like a boxing match or a wrestling match in an uh, arena or auditorium or even a, uh, you know, something like a basketball game in a very big arena, like 65,000 people? But when you look down there and you're in the nosebleed sections, how do people look? Can't see much, can you? Don't see uh, particulars. That's only 65,000. We're talking about millions. Uh, are you going to be in the, Are you going to be with the thousands of thousands? Or are you going to be with the ten thousands of ten thousands? That's how you have to look at that. Where are you going to be? If you did look, if you didn't want to hear God's word, you wanted to just sing a little, or you didn't want God's word, went down to the big houses. If you didn't want God's word and you wanted to stay home, uh, don't expect to be in near Him. You didn't want to be near Him in your life. Don't expect to be near Him uh, in the millennium. Expect to be way out there. Where? In the nosebleed section. Especially today where they've forgotten God. And I'm not talking about the lost. I'm talking about the people in the churches. You don't want to see them now? I don't want to go to, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to see them. Okay. Bah, 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 bah. When he comes back, don't expect to see him. I have a lot of people. I bang doors. Oh, I can't wait for the rapture. I would if I were you. Just something to think about. Amen. So, he says, I saw seven. There's the first uh, a vision. And he had eyes of flame in him. And he sees all that's out there. Verse number 15, and his feet like unto fine brass. What a difference. Feet like unto fine brass. As if they burned in a, a furnace. Okay, a uh, fine brass. Uh, you know what brass is a picture of? Larry, go ahead. I know you're biting on the biting on it. Brass is judgment. Yeah. Okay. You gotta understand something else. Brass is always also fool's gold. Kind of looks like gold, but it's not gold, right? It's fool's gold. Okay. Uh, there you are thinking you're gonna get the left hand of God. Get on that side. Well, you know, uh, take care of things when I get there. You know, there's a lot of people that say that. Hey, what are you? Are you saved? Uh, no. Well, you know, you need to get saved to get in. I'll take. Uh, I'll. I'll worry about that when I get there. You better worry about it here. Why? When you get there, you got fool's gold on the left side. What's that judgment? If you don't want God's right hand of fellowship. The only one he has left is this one. What's that? The left-handed judgment. I don't want that one. I've seen what the Lord does. Yeah. Just throwing them salt balls and brimstone balls down. Uh -uh, I don't want anything to do with it. Amen. So he says, uh, he says his feet were like fine brass. Go over to Ezekiel 24. Ezekiel 24, and uh, said, look at verse number 11. Notice the number, 11, judgment. Then set it up empty upon the coals thereof. Watch, that the brass of it may be hot and may burn, and that the filthiness of it may be molten in it, that the scum of it may be consumed. Get the, get the dross, get the scum, get it out of there. Uh, why? What is he telling about judgment? I'm bringing it out. Brass is a is judgment. Uh, it's different. Uh, to look, we're in the we're in the age of grace, and and there's some things that are different. There's a contrast on how God does it in Romans. In Romans 10:15, what does He say? Precious are the feet of them that do what? Preach the gospel of grace. Precious are the feet. Uh, you can preach the gospel of grace, and precious are them, or you can you can take the brass feet. Because God's coming back, and you know what he's standing on? He stands on his feet. He's standing on judgment, people. Is that what you want to be? You realize that when the Lord comes back, the reason why he can't actually hit the ground at the rapture is because he's the judge of all the earth, and if he hits the ground, he has to judge it all. He has to take us up before he, can, he has to judge the earth. Because why? We are the saved. We are the remnant. And he must, he's coming back to get us out of here. How do you know that? Uh, well, it was written, it was put in uh, with Lot in Sodom. Amen. 
It was put in Noah. What happened to his people when everything was messed up? Put eight people that were left right on a boat and said, okay, go. You know what God's used to? Take his people out first and then, then cause judgment to come. He doesn't want his bride to go through that kind of stuff. Just like your kids. You're going to pull them out of the house before you light it on fire for the insurance money. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hope this place doesn't catch fire now. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <laughs> All right. So uh, then look at verse number um, 16. And he says, and he had in his right hand, his right hand of mercy. What does he have? He has seven stars. And, in, and out of his mouth went a sharp uh, two-edged sword. And his countenance was as the sun uh, shineth in his uh, strength. He says he's got a two-edged sword. Now you know that that, what that's like, that two-edged sword. What's that? That's the discerner. It, it splits everything up. Uh, it'll split up a family uh, and then it can get it back together. But first somebody's going to get saved and it starts to cut it up. It, it, it cuts the, the, the bones and the marrow and all the sinew away from the spirit and the soul. Why? Well, you know what physical is and what spiritual is. Amen? And you start to recognize those things. Uh, it's, it, it, it's a divider of things. God's a divider. He's not a, he's not a uniter like every... He wouldn't have made the United States. You know what? He doesn't make it anyway. He wants a church. How does he get a church? He has to divide them. Are you saved or are you lost? You see? He's a divider of things. You know, you get a garden out there. What do you do? You divide it all up. And do what? Get the weeds out of there. The weeds got to get out of that garden. And that's how he is. He's a sharp, he has a sharp two-edged sword. And, and in his hand of grace, he has those seven stars. And his countenance was as the sun that shineth in his strength. And in the book of Malachi, uh, it says the son of righteousness till he comes. He's like the sun, the bright star that opens up the morning and, and comes. And he, he, he gives light on the earth. That's the sun. Amen. And then in uh, verse number 17, he says, And, and when I uh, saw him, I did the right thing. Did you notice that? What's that? I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid, uh, take some, to read that a hundred times to yourself easily. Why? When you go to the judgment seat of Christ, nobody's good enough to stand. Get down on your belly before God. And don't look up. And the first thing he says, say, have mercy on me or something. His, uh, it says, and I saw my fellow at his feet as dead. And he laid, wait for him, he laid his right hand of mercy upon me, saying unto me, what? You're not. You're going to be afraid when you see him. You're going to be fearful when you see him. You have to have the fear of God in you. Of what he can do. And, and, and he touches you. And you know what he does? The hand of comfort. Fear not. Didn't you ever notice that's how he is? He comes to Joshua. Joshua's got his armies in front of him. He sees the structure. It's, it's there. He's pacing. Uh, uh, just so you know, good, command, good commanders, when they're in a battle, you know what they do before they go into battle? They're pacing i got to go over there, and i got to lose men and everything else. And, you know, God comes and he says, fear not. Fear not. There's nothing to fear here. He's telling him. Fear not, he says to him. Why, why, Lord, I am the first and the last. I'm the one you've been waiting for. Amen? He says, I've been, I'm the one, and I am he that liveth. I'm all keep going, and I keep going. And was dead. And I, 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 I did that one time. That, guess what? Uh, that's one thing that the devil can't do with the Lord. He, he can't die. Uh, the Lord died and came back. He, he lived like a man. Amen? That's why he says, get thee behind me, Satan. He says, uh, I am alive for how long? Forevermore. Amen. And look what he says. He says, and have the keys of hell and 
of death. So everybody now is running around trying to find these keys, like there's some physical keys to get into heaven and uh, to get into hell and heaven. I, I'm I'm telling you, this is this is even true in uh, in our Bible believers. I've I've heard people say this from the pulpit, and then you see this bozo over in Rome with these two things going. He's got the keys. Hmm. Wouldn't that be something? Most wicked man on earth. Uh, let's go over to John chapter 20. I've got the keys to hell and of death. John chapter uh, 20. <coughs> and... Uh, uh, Jesus comes in and he says, verse number 21 in the uh, upper room, he talks to him, he says, Then Jesus said unto, excuse me, and when he had said so, verse 20, he showed unto them his hands and his side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father hath sent me, even so send I you, you guys are up, up, up on deck. Verse 22, And when he had said this, he breathed on them, and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Now this is the part. Whosoever sins, ye remit. They are remitted unto them. Sins are forgiven. Amen? Who's ever sinned? Now they're not forgiving them. How are they doing it? Because he says here afterwards, And whosoever sins ye retain, they are Retained. How are you going to do that? Well, it's called preaching. Amen? How will they know unless they someone preach to them? Amen? You need a preacher. Get out there and preach to them. It doesn't have to be somebody that's ordained or anything like that. God's just looking for a preacher, somebody to go out. And what's that? They can get their sins forgiven. Amen? What's the keys? Preaching. Words. Words are the key. Faith. And if you get faith, what happens? It opens up. Amen? There's the key to death and hell right there. It's by preaching. Not by some physical thing or anything like that. Verse number 19, he says to him, he says, Write the things. Write the things which, which thou hast seen. That's the Gospel of John. And the things which are, they're the letters of John. Amen? And then what? And the things which shall be hereafter. That's the book you're reading right now. Verse number 20, the mystery. You notice mystery is church, right? Prophecy is who? Israel. Mystery, church, prophecy, Israel. And look what he says. Here's the, he says, the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Well, who are the angels of the seven churches? Oh, we got some angel hanging above our church. No. Angel's a messenger. Who gives the message? There you go. There's the light. The messenger gives the message. What's that? That's the, that's the preacher in that church at that moment. So he says... Here we go, we got the seven stars, and they're, they're the, the light. Who's that? The guy that's speaking. And he says they're the angels of those seven churches, those local churches. Now watch, and the seven candles, the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven what? Church is pretty easy, isn't it? He's telling you what these things are. And then you go home and you get your friends come out and you don't know what these things are. You know, you've got dragons and everything else. And there's God saying, I, I explained this stuff to you, just didn't read. Amen. That's how you know when somebody's read the whole book because all these things are going to come out. He's going to send these to the churches. He needs one guy to preach them and he sends it to them. Why would he send these? Well, what happened in 24? Disciples want to know what's, when's the end of the world? When's these things going to be coming about? I need to know these things. Didn't you want to know? And he wants them, He wants you to know. He's going to send it to the seven stars that are going to put that in the seven local churches. Go to the first verse of the next uh, chapter, and you'll notice something. He says, and unto the church, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand. 
Who's that guy? Jesus Christ. Now watch what he says. Who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Who are the candlesticks? They're the churches. They are local churches. God is building a church. How? By local churches. You see, you got too many people worried about, oh, you know, we got the universal church of God. It's mentioned a whole lot twice in the Bible. Other than that, it's how, how many local, it's always local church. Look, local church doesn't make up the, it, it, it doesn't make up the physical or whatever body of Christ, but you have to realize something. That's how God's using it. He's using a church to bring more people. Amen? To care for people and everything else. That's what he's doing. He's using the church. And where is he? You want to find Jesus? He's down at the local church. He's not at the carnival. He's not a, I go hunting and I find God out there. Yeah, phony, you don't find anything out there. You can't even hit a deer. Most of them come back empty all the time. Maybe if they were in church, they'd go another day and find one. Never think about that. But you have to realize something. I hear this stuff all the time. How many people have heard this one? I used to be a missionary. Didn't you notice something about missionaries? You know, I don't know how many, how many times have you had a missionary come in and you hear this, I'll die for the gospel. Well, why don't you look over at Israel right now? They're all on planes flying home. Isn't that something? People don't pick up on that, do they? Well, you know, got to keep care of my family. Send your family back. Isn't that what they told us? What about guys like Livingston? They went down into Africa. Did he come home? No, he boiled him, they boiled him in oil. For what, the gospel's sake? We're at that time right now. I'm not telling them to commit suicide, but I can tell you this right now. When the bombs are going off and people are running and bleeding's going on, not a bad time to preach the gospel, is it? There was a guy in a, in a, in a hospital overseas, and guys were coming back and bringing them in in stretchers and everything else. One guy going around to each stretcher, he was one of them, going around, you know what he was saying? You need to get saved. You need to come to Christ. That's a missionary. In there. I got to get on the plane. Come on, church, give me thousands of dollars so I can get my whole family home. Bring your family home. You can stay in there. You got people to get saved. Amen? I just thought that was a little odd. Just something to think about. He says the seven stars. Where's Jesus? He's down at the local church. You can go find him. When people ask you uh, what you learned, come on down. But, but our church, don't stop the singing. Uh, uh, thousands of songs. We don't need to know, oh, I love God. You know what we need? You need to get in the book. And you need to write a book. You need to stop playing around with these other books and these other comic books that they call Bibles. You know what you'll notice is you'll never learn anything. You'll just do little dinky devotions because you can't do a Bible study out of those books. I, I've tried. You can't do one. And uh, if you could, then why are the bozos that are up there, they don't even know their Bible? Because they're not doing the Bible studies out of those books. They're just going over and regurgitating what some other man said. Amen, amen, amen. You know why some of you are smiling? Because you know it. Amen. You've got to have the right word. There's only one God of the Bible. There can only be one Bible of God. What is this, crazy stuff? Yeah. All right. So we got done the chapter. Next week we'll go on to chapter 2, and we'll start to get into uh, the churches. And we'll go, we're going to go through slow so everybody gets, a, gets to know what these churches and what they are. And maybe these churches are a growth process of a person. Maybe uh, they're ages of the church. Uh, and, uh, you know, maybe as the church moves on, it just goes, has its ups and downs like it's going to say. Amen? All right, but we'll learn that as we go on. Let's pray. Uh, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for teaching us today. We thank you, Lord God, for, uh, for clearing things up and that we need to have cleared up, Lord Father. We thank you for being good to us. We thank you for John being on the Isle of Patmos, although it wasn't a good time for John. You came to see John, and, and now we hear about it, of what you said to him, which is the most important thing. And we thank you for it. Thank you, Lord, for the church, and thank you for putting somebody in there to bring light on the scriptures thank you for these things. We love you, Lord, and we just want to hear from you. Uh, as uh, most people, in it, everybody in here, I've asked already, they're saved. So 
Father, just bless us as we go and give us peace. Maybe we come back tonight and learn Jeremiah uh, and, and hear the things of the remnant as it goes down the tube. We thank you, Lord, and we love you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hi, Maggie. Hi, Janice. Janice is in West Virginia, and there's Betty. Amen. It's good to see you guys.